All right, this is the wind restrictor installation for the Chevrolet C6 Corvette Roadster. This will be the same installation for the power top as well as the manual top. Just a quick installation note, we are going to be maneuvering your top a few times during the installation process to gain access to various panels uh, and areas inside your Roadster. If you do have the power top and have maneuvered it to this position with the tonneau cover, um, it will begin to close automatically after approximately four minutes, so please be aware of that. Also with the automatic top it does require additional power to get your uh, top to maneuver up and down several times in a row, so we do recommend starting your engine from time to time so that you do not drain your battery. Step number one is to remove the rear panel that the speakers are mounted into as shown in this photo here. It's just a few small screw grommets that hold this panel into place and then we're just going to pull it right back. Uh, it is optional that you go ahead and unplug the speakers and remove the panel altogether from the car. However, it's not necessary. It will make it more convenient for you. Now if you are going to want to remove this panel entirely, pay close attention to this bottom illustration. You'll have to disconnect the speaker clip with a small object such as an Allen wrench or uh, something uh, similar by pressing the lever located at the bottom of the clip. I think it's important to note uh, with the power top, the divider shown laying down here usually mounted where the red line uh, so if you accidentally dis disengage it from the back, go ahead and snap that back if you're trying to maneuver your top. Okay, now we're at step two. Uh, just a note, uh, from here on, we will be applying the same step to both the driver's and the passenger side, just the same. At this point, it will help if your seats are in their furthermost upward position. Okay, let's go ahead and locate the seat belt cover panels and remove them. These are held in place by a screw rivet on the side and one clip to the front of the panel. If you will lift up the flap on top of this panel, you can see down behind where that clip is located so that you can remove the panel. We can go ahead and lay the panel in the front seat out of the way. Uh, just remember we're going to uh, be placing them back into their original position in a future step. Okay, step three is that we're going to pull the carpet back away from the frame and the seatbelt column area so that we can expose the area we are going to mount our metal brackets onto. Uh, don't worry, this carpet will go back into place uh, exactly like it was before it was removed. Okay, step number four, you will need a small hammer or a mallet to tap the anchors into place inside the seatbelt column. Here's that seatbelt column diagram here. We are going to be using the upper slot of this uh, tower and uh, we're going to mount the anchor inside the middle of this upper slot. The screw and the nut that are currently mounted into this anchor are going to be used for stability while we are tapping the anchor into the column. After we have the anchor mounted into the center of this column, we are going to be removing that screw and nut at that time. Although you can discard the nut after that, hang on to the screw for a future step. Here's a close-up of that anchor mounted into the column flush. Here we are on the passenger side, uh, tapping the anchors into the upper slot. Of course, we're going to perform this step on both sides. After we have the anchor tapped into place, flush, simply loosen the nut with some pliers, take the screw out, leaving the anchor in place, go ahead and discard the nut, and keep the screw for a future step. Okay, step five is that we're going to remount the seat belt post cover panel. Again, perform the same task on both passenger and driver side. Now, in step five, we're only going to secure this panel with the front clip. So the hole on the side of this panel needs to line up perfectly with the anchor hole that we just mounted into the column. We're going to be placing our number 10 screw through this hole in a future step to secure our metal brackets. Okay, in step six, we're going to snap the metal brackets onto the lower portion of the frame next to the seatbelt column. 
that we just pulled the carpet back off of. These are what's going to hold the wind restrictor securely to the vehicle. Make sure the threaded posts are pointed towards the center of the vehicle. The small little metal standoff on the back side of these frame brackets are what we are going to refer to as a bushing. Once you snap the bracket in place onto the lower part of the frame, this bushing should line up perfectly with the opening on the cover panel, and that will allow us to assemble our number 10 screw in the next step. Now these two tabs here are what's going to allow these metal brackets to snap down onto the frame securely. The back and front tab should clamp down under this frame. In order to make sure we're snapping the bracket down into its proper position from left to right, let's make sure that the bracket, uh, side of the bracket is approximately three-fourths of an inch away from the side of this frame here before we snap it down into position. Again, we have to make sure that the bushing lines up with the hole in the cover panel. So if you need to, uh, tap the feet of this bracket in an outward motion slightly until that bushing perfectly lines up with the hole. As you are snapping these uh, lower brackets into place, be careful not to bend out the feet. Uh, if you do, the tabs are not going to snap in under that frame tightly. Uh, if you do bend it out accidentally, go ahead and just bend it right back so that it snaps down securely. Okay, here we are mounting that bracket into place. Again, just rock it forward and backwards and uh, left to right, approximately three-fourths of an inch away from the side of that uh, frame. And it will snap into place eventually and make sure that that bushing is perfectly in line with the hole on that panel so that we can place our bolt through it in step seven. Okay, in step seven, now it is time to place our bolt through this bracket into the seat belt column anchor that we mounted earlier. It's very important in this step that it is aligned properly so that the screw will travel through the frame bracket, uh, through the ABS plastic cover, and then into that anchor uh, that we mounted in a previous step. Now we do suggest using a socket wrench to perform this task. However, you can use a flathead screwdriver if you like. Now I'm going to walk you through what's going to happen with this anchor system here. Now please disregard the nut in uh, my illustration here as we threw that away in a previous step. But as we're tightening the bolt into this anchor here, you're going to notice that it's going to get tight after just a few turns into the anchor. That's because these jaws here are going to open up behind the actual slot in that column, making it a very, very strong mounting point. It would actually take an extreme amount of excessive force to pull this from the vehicle once it's mounted inside that column. Now once you actually feel this bolt enter the anchor, you're going to turn it approximately 14 times until the panel is pulled very tight against the seat belt column. And you will begin to feel it stop at the end. Now be careful not to over tighten this as you may do damage to your panel. Once the feet of this bracket are snapped into place securely and the bolt is tightened down very good, uh, if you give it a slight pull there will be very little movement, if any, in this bracket at all. Okay, step eight is optional, and that is that we are going to cut a very small slot in your carpet so that it will fit perfectly around our newly mounted brackets down here. If you look at it from this angle here, it's going to look like an upside down T. And basically, if you lay the carpet over the bracket, you'll see exactly where this needs to happen. So after this is cut and it is applied over the bracket, it would sit flush around the front side of our bracket there. And then for the rear side of the bracket, uh, these two flaps shown here would uh, basically wrap behind the bracket and meet each other perfectly. Now this whole area here is going to be right at the base of your panel, so you should be able to tuck it right up under the panel. Okay, in step nine, we can go ahead and install your speaker panel back to its original position, and the divider as well if you do have one. Alright, in step 10, it's now time to install our wind restrictor onto these brackets.
Now you'll find already attached to the glass are the metal arms which will enable you to attach it to the side mounting brackets. You will secure these brackets together using the acorn nuts and lock washers that are provided in your kit. At this point we do want to make sure that these two brackets are secured together very tightly. Also, please ensure that the bend of the wind restrictor is to the front of your vehicle, allowing your seats to go back. Okay, step 11, it's time to run our wire for uh, our wind restrictor so that we can ground it and get power uh, from the rear wiring harness of the car uh, in the next step. Uh, but for now, we're just going to run the wire. If you have uh, any other ideas about running the wire, uh, through a different route, uh, please feel free. However, this is what we feel uh, is the most simple way to do it. The wiring is all going to be done on the passenger side of your vehicle. Okay, just for illustrative purposes, here's our light bar, which uh, should already be mounted onto the wind restrictor for you. And now that we have the wind restrictor mounted into place, this is where it should be located. And we'll have the wiring harness or the cover on the wires uh, that should be coming off to the passenger side. Okay, since we're behind the seats at this point, uh, this harness should be just left suspended in the vehicle, or feel free to tie it back around the bracket if you like. Uh, totally your preference. Now I'm only going to cover the basic wiring setup, which would be to the headlights or tail lights. Um, if you do have one of our upgraded modules such as the extreme lighting package, brake lamp module, dimmer, switch, stuff like that, uh, please refer to the individual insert that should be in the box uh, along with the instructions in your order. Because as long as you know where the grounding nut is and the wiring harness in the vehicle, you should be able to follow that insert and hook up the accessory properly. Uh, but again, if you do have any questions at all, please feel free to call us. Okay, with the basic setup, we are going to have two wires. The first wire is the negative wire. Um, it is a black wire. They're both black. Um, but it, we're going to look for the black wire with nothing printed on it at all. I know it's kind of difficult to see, but if you look closely, there will be no print or lettering at all on the wire that is negative. Okay, that is the wire that we're going to run down the front side of that uh, frame right under the carpet and attached to the bolt as seen in this illustration here. Uh, so in other words, ground that negative wire underneath this bolt very tightly. And just remember this will be the same ground that you'll use for the uh, different wires that are uh, connected to the modules uh, that we offer, the accessory modules. Okay, now we'll take the positive wire or the uh, black wire that has some type of printed indention on it and run it out the back side uh, of the carpet here around the panel and into the uh, side wall carpet panel um, that contains the wiring harness for your car. Um, it is held in place by uh, one simple uh, screw grommet. All you do is unscrew that and pull the carpet back um, to run the positive wire back and plug into the harness in the next step. All right, we're now ready to give some power to our wind restrictor. Let's look right behind this side panel on the passenger side that we just pulled back and look for the harness located uh, here in this illustration. If we pull back the covering on this harness just a bit, we can see all of the wires that are inside of it and we can separate them and look at the different colors. The blue wire you're going to want to plug into if you want power when you press on your brakes. And the brown wire is the one you're going to use, dark brown, if you want to get power from your headlights or running lights whenever they come on. Again, if you do have one of our upgraded accessory modules, please refer to the insert that came with that in the box. All right, now we're going to attach the wires together. Uh, pick out the blue or brown, whichever you choose, and take your clip that is provided, the vampire clamp that was for provided in the package. Place the positive wire all the way uh, through the back side of the clip until it stops. Then uh, take the other side of the clip and place it over the brown or blue wire, whichever you choose. 
The way this clip works basically is that the metal tap is going to go down and bite into the two wires without breaking them or uh, stripping them. 